Did you know the word politics comes from ancient Greek polis, the city-state, in which the first kind of democracy was carried out by its citizens? They, like us today, identify problems and discuss them. We do it on the streets and in bars, and sometimes begrudgingly at Thanksgiving dinners. In Athens, the citizens all came together on a designated hill outside of the city to discuss current issues and create policy solutions. Every free man, literally only free men by the way, had a say and a vote to decide on a policy for each issue. Thus, word on the street was transformed into politics. This input from citizens into policy making is what we call direct democracy. Modern nation states, like Germany in our example here, do not share one common public space where all citizens could meet. Reaching an understanding about common issues merely by talking them over is unfeasible for the amount of people that would have to be included in our modern societies. The problems of our time are very much different from those of ancient Greece in three ways. Because of the diversity among our citizens, mitigating their issues is far more complex. Moreover, to be a citizen today is no longer a vocation. Unlike the men of Athens, we usually have to work to earn a living and do not have the time to spend all of a day pondering and discussing political issues. That may be part of the reason why many people today feel they do not have the adequate expert knowledge about those issues to contribute to the political sphere. What most modern democracies do instead, then, is have designated representatives from the populace devote their full time to be professional politicians. They carry out the public discussion of issues in our place. Mass media channels their discussions back to our societies, but only the politicians get to decide on those issues in the designated political arena. We, the public, do get the chance to vote for a representative of one worldview or political persuasion in certain intervals, usually every few years. In most of our democratic systems, the representatives are being organized through party affiliation. The majorities that come about in the elections then get to decide on current issues and turn them into policies for as long as they are elected. We regular citizens do not get to have an input on policy making during that time. This system of politics is what we call indirect democracy. Recently, there are people who are no longer satisfied with such a rigid system that all but eliminates the input of citizens from policy making. They argue that any citizen at any time should have the chance to make their voice heard in the policy-making process, even if they do not want to become full-time politicians. Full-time politicians and parties may still be useful, but every citizen should be given a vote for every issue on the table. In this system, people may choose to delegate their vote to another person whom they trust to make an informed decision in their place. They in turn may delegate those collected votes further on to yet somebody else, a politician who stands for a certain worldview, perhaps. They may also choose to elect professional politicians themselves. And now, people also get to vote on policies directly. Now, there are several ways in which the input from people may be transformed into policy. Moreover, whenever there is a particular issue in which a person has such a strong opinion they do not want to trust anyone else to make the decision for them, they can take back their vote from the person they delegated it to and vote on the policy themselves. It is this fluid alternation between direct democracy and indirect democracy that gives name to the proposed system of liquid democracy. Modern technology has made a public space that all citizens can inhabit possible. Instead of on a hill outside the city, we may meet in cyberspace. We can discuss events online to determine issues that warrant policy making. Collaboration tools, of which Wikipedia is but one small example, can facilitate ways in which many people can have an input on policies. And computers and modern cryptography can tally votes and the delegation of votes so we can decide on those policies. This way, all citizens could partake in policy making once again, much like on the Agora, the hill outside of Athens.
In Switzerland, the people have a say in almost everything. Swiss citizens can propose legislation, and they can overturn legislation already approved by Parliament. Any change to the Swiss constitution must first pass by the people, and so must a range of other things, anything from building a local gym to whether or not to legalize the consumption of cannabis. Popular votes in Switzerland take place at three levels, at the municipal, cantonal, or national level. This is in line with the principle of subsidiarity, under which the central authority only performs tasks which cannot be handled at a lower level. A typical vote at municipal level might be on public construction projects. In the city of Zurich, for example, voters agreed to the building of a new stadium. In Bern, they approved the construction of a glass canopy over the tram and bus station. Certain police issues are also dealt with at municipal level. In St. Gallen, voters approved new police regulations allowing the police to order anyone being disruptive to leave a public place. At cantonal level, voters have been asked about issues such as not smoking in restaurants or on the opening hours of shops at petrol stations. Educational issues also fall under cantonal jurisdiction and so voters are asked to decide on issues such as whether attending kindergarten should become obligatory or not and on renovating university premises. Issues relevant to the whole of Switzerland are put to nationwide vote. Examples include the Schengen-Dublin agreement with the EU on justice and asylum or legislation recognizing same-sex registered partnerships. People vote around four times a year at the national level, possibly even more at a cantonal or municipal level. Voter turnout is usually around 40%, depending on the topic. To date, foreign nationals have no political rights at the federal level. In only two cantons, Neuchâtel and Jura, a non-Swiss allowed to vote at the cantonal and municipal level. In Vaux and Fribourg, they can vote at the municipal level. A popular vote can refer to either a referendum or a popular initiative. There are two types of referendum, mandatory and optional. A mandatory referendum is the most frequent instrument at the national level. This type of referendum must be held if the parliament wants to make a change to the federal constitution, to join a supranational community such as the UN or the EU, or to introduce urgent federal legislation without the required constitutional basis. An optional referendum is one which can be requested by Swiss citizens to challenge a piece of legislation already approved by Parliament. An optional referendum is held if opponents of the new law collect 50,000 signatures within 100 days of the legislation being announced. An optional referendum can also be requested by the cantons, if at least eight cantons do so. Swiss citizens also have the right to propose new legislation and can do so by launching a popular initiative. A nationwide vote on the issue is held if the Popular Initiative Committee manages to collect 100,000 signatures within 18 months. While direct democracy is one of the most important features of the Swiss political system, the main players in political decision-making remain the parliament and government. Out of the 169 popular initiatives launched between 1848 and 2009, only 16 were accepted. But despite their low rate of success, popular initiatives can prompt discussions and influence the shaping of policy.